Hello everyone and welcome back to The Breakdown. Today I'm going to be teaching you exactly how to download and install, I guess not download and install, but make a paper server in Minecraft 1.14.4. Previous to this, I've made a video on how to start a bucket server in 1.14.4, how to start a forward server, how to start a spigot server. But if you want to start a server that's meant for a lot of people, a lot of players, right? For example, more than even 20 players in Minecraft 1.14.4, the only way to do it is with paper. If you want a server with just you and your friends, you can do it with Spigot or Bucket or you know you can start a modded server with Forge. But if you want a server with a lot of players on it, paper is the only way to do it. Now one thing I will say, the paper server we're starting here is just meant for your friends and family. It's not meant for a public server, it's not meant for anything like that. And that's simply because it's hosted on your own local IP address. What that means is from the IP address of this server, people can DDoS you, taking your internet offline basically. They can figure out where you live because the IP address gives them access to your city your state, and even your latitude and longitude coordinates. You'll see all that later in the video though. So this is just meant for your friends and family. And then on top of that, it also does run on your own computer's hardware. And as a server, even on paper, it does take some computer hardware, and especially at a bigger server. It's going to take some computer hardware, even if it is running on paper. And so because of that, if you don't have a good enough computer to like play Minecraft and you know run a server at the same time, you're not gonna be able to run this server. So what do you do if you do want a public server? What do you do if you don't have a computer that's good enough to run Minecraft? Well, we have a solution for you, and that solution is Apex Minecraft Hosting. Apex is an incredible 24-hour DDoS directed Minecraft server host that will allow you to have a public server that anybody can join. You can give the IP out publicly, you're completely protected because it's using Apex's hardware. And those servers are meant to be public and given out to everyone. On top of that, Apex makes it super, super simple to set up paper on your server with just a few clicks. And last but not least, Apex is just overall an incredible server host. We love them so much, we host playdotbreakdowncraft.com on them, which is our own public Minecraft server. So nevertheless, if you want an incredible 24-hour Minecraft server host, Apex Minecraft Hosting is the way to go. You can check out Apex at the first link down below, the breakdown.xyz slash Apex. Nevertheless, if you are okay with just having a paper server for your friends and family, let's go ahead and jump straight on into it. The first thing you want to do is go to the second link down below, and it's going to take you here. This is Paper's download page. From here, you'll be able to see all the different types of paper, specifically Paper 114.4 and 113.2, or what they support right now. 114.4 is where we're going to be downloading, so click on that. And then once you've clicked on that, we can go ahead and download the latest build, whatever it is, whether it's 176 or or 2,400. Doesn't matter what the number is, just go ahead and click on the download button under build there. We'll then download in the bottom left. It will ask us to keep the file, and as long as it starts with paper and ends in .jar, we're gonna go ahead and click keep to save the file. Now we minimize our browser. It's here on my desktop. Yours may be in your downloads folder. You can find your downloads folder by clicking the Windows icons in the top left for me, but it's in the bottom left of your screen. Typing in downloads, and then in here, there's your downloads folder, and then in here you'll find the paper file you downloaded, drag it to your desktop for ease of use. Now at this point, we want to go ahead and right click on our desktop, create a new folder, and you can title this folder whatever. I'm going to title it play.breakdowncraft.com. Why am I titling it that? Because as I mentioned in the sponsor spot for Apex, that is our Minecraft server and it is absolutely incredible. If you want to try out a paper server, all of the servers on Breakdowncraft are running on paper. Nevertheless, once you've got that folder created, we can drag your paper file you downloaded into your folder here. Now if we double click on this folder, we'll be able to basically see the paper.jar in here. Now the first thing we need to do is make sure we rename this, but before we rename it, you need to click on view up here on the top of your basically file manager. When you click on view, you'll then have over here file name extensions. Most likely yours just says paper. 176. You need to click the checkbox next to file name extensions and make sure it's checked. And then it should say paper.jar at the end. Now we want to go ahead and right click on this file we downloaded and whatever it says, paper 176, paper 1400, even if it doesn't say paper, we want it to rename it to paper.jar. Now, as long as you have file name extensions, you should be able to go ahead and save there. If you don't have file name extensions, like enabled, you'll want to make sure it just says paper there. But if you do, it should say paper.jar, just like mine. Now let's go ahead and get this jar opened up. To do that, right click, create a new text document, and then in this new text document, you could just save it as a new text document and open it up. And then in this new text document, you're going to go to the description and find this right here. These are codes, basically, that allow you to start your server with a certain amount of RAM. So two gigabytes, three gigabytes, four gigabytes, so on and so forth. If you want to up it, you can change your RAM amount right here. However, I wouldn't really recommend running a paper server on more than 10 gigabytes of RAM unless you're running like an older version or an older world specifically. Let's say you've converted your world from 1.12 or 1.8. Then, yeah, run more RAM, but otherwise up to 10 gigabytes is 
kind of your max is what you want to do. But unless, let's go ahead and just copy the, we'll do the four gigabyte one here, and then paste it into the new text document. Then you want to click File, Save As on your new text document. Your file name needs to be run.bat, and then your save type as can be all files. It actually must be all files, so we need to click on all files there. So file name, run.bat, save type as is all files. Then go ahead and click Save. Now we can go ahead and close out of this document here. We can delete the new text document we created, and we should have a run.bat file here. Now we double click on this run.bat file. It's gonna go ahead, download everything. It's gonna basically kinda of get the server started, except it's going to fail. However, it'll create an EULA file. As you can see, boom, failed, failed to load properties file because it failed to load the EULA there. So let's go ahead and get the EULA agreed to. Before we agree to the EULA, what if you didn't get an EULA.txt? What if it just didn't work? Well, the first thing you wanna do is again, make sure that this says paper.jar and you have file name extensions clicked. If you don't, then it's not gonna work. However, if you do have file name extensions clicked and it's still not working, if it's saying something about an object, object heap or it's just saying Java not found or something like that, you need to download Java. So you can find that in the description down below. You'll find our tutorial on how to download and install Java for Minecraft servers. And we're making a Minecraft server. This goes through the entire process of getting Java. We're actually doing a video on this that'll come out soon and it'll be up here as well. So yeah, you can go through this entire tutorial here. Now if that doesn't work, you can go ahead and get the jar fix, which is also linked in the description down below. Come here, click this download button, and then basically you're good to go. But go through this tutorial to uh, get the jar fix up and running and fix all the jar files on your computer to work with Java again. Now if we minimize our browser, here well, on our desktop, we can double click the run.bat if you had the issue before and get the eula.txt file. So let's go ahead and open up the eula.txt file. And as long as you agree to the eula.txt here, you can go ahead and change eula equals false to eula equals true. Also, you also agree that tacos are the tasty and best food in the world. I agree. So let's go ahead and eula equals true there and then do file, save. And now we can double click on the run.bat file. At this point, the server will start right on up without any issues whatsoever. And um, yeah, that's basically that. It starts everything on up. Now, at this point, your friends and family can't join the server, but you could join the server off of your default gateway or local IP address. So either one, your IPv4 address or your default gateway, and you could join the server via Minecraft. If this is a test server for just you, there's no reason to move on. But what if you want other people to be able to join this server? Well, to do that, we're going to need to be able to port forward. And to do that, we need the server to completely start up. So let's go ahead and let that happen. There we go. The server is now completely started up. It says done there. We can go ahead and stop the server by typing STOP over here and hitting enter. Stop, enter, boom. It's going to shut everything down and press any key to continue. Now let's port forward to allow your friends to join. Now, port forwarding can be a bit overwhelming, and I get that. But the thing is, we have helped millions of people port forward for Minecraft. We know what we're doing here. We've got a ton of support articles for you. We've got a ton of ways for you to get additional help outside of our videos. So let's just go ahead and jump right on into it. The first thing you want to do is click on the Windows icon. It's in the top left for me, but it's in the bottom left of your screen. That little Windows icon in the bottom left. Click on that and then type in CMD, right like so. And then you'll have Command Prompt here. So go ahead and click on Command Prompt. And then once you've done that, it'll open up Command Prompt. In Command Prompt, you want to type IPCONFIG. IP config exactly like that and hit enter. It'll then give you all sorts of information, but we just need two bits of information from this. So let's go ahead and open ourselves up a new notepad document and copy that information over to here. The first thing we need is our IPv4 address, which in my case is 192.168.1.123. So again, that was from over here. 192.168.1.123 and then we need our default gateway. Now there are two different options for your default gateway. And if there's just one, that's fine. Just get the one that there is. But there should be two different options. One that's a bunch of numbers and letters. And one that's just numbers, right? We want the one that's just numbers. So in my case, 192.168.1.1. Now these numbers could be completely different for you. And if they are, that's perfectly fine. But you need to make sure that you are getting the correct numbers from over here and copying them over for your computer. At this point, we can close out a command prompt because we copied them over to here. Now let's go ahead and find our server.properties file. Double click on it. You might need to select to open it with notepad. If you do, select to open it with notepad and then scroll down until you see server dash IP equals. Right next to the equal sign, no space or anything, go ahead and type your IPv4 address right here. So 192.168.1.123. For me, whatever your IPv4 address is, go ahead and type that IPv4 address in there right next to server dash IP there. Now we can go ahead and do file save on our server.properties file and then we can get on with port forwarding. So to do that, go ahead and copy the default gateway here. 
open up your browser of choice and then in your browser open up a brand spanking new tab in your brand spanking new tab here go ahead and enter your default gateway right where you would normally enter breakdowncraft.com youtube.com right in the normal url bar enter your default gateway and hit enter then you'll most likely get a page that looks completely different from what you see on your screen right now and that is perfectly fine because I'm gonna walk you through everything. However, there's one commonality that you'll probably have. We have a login box over here, and guess what? You're probably gonna have a login box as well. Now, what do you enter into that login box? Well, we have a tutorial here on how to find your router's password. Now, this is gonna be actually different from a typical like Wi-Fi password. So you wanna to come to this article, go through this entire article, of finding your router's password, method one, two, three, four, five. By method five, you have definitely found your router's password and have went and entered it and you've logged in. Once you've logged into your router here, by the way, most people don't make it past method, method three. Like you have found your router password by method three of this article. But nevertheless, once you log in, you're probably again gonna have a completely different looking page than what I have here. And if you do, that is perfectly fine. All you need to do is find port forwarding. Now, it can be a bit overwhelming. What is all this? External storage, speed check, media prioritization, security, open VPN server. What even is all this? Don't worry about it. All you need to do is find port forwarding. Luckily, we have a tutorial linked in the description down below on port forwarding. Specifically, this video right here is where most of the value is. This goes through all of the top routers on the market today, from Verizon to Netgear to Linksys to Cisco. All of them are on this list and in this video, we go through every single one of them and find port forwarding in one of them. Even if your router isn't on this list though, I would recommend watching that video because it is going to probably have something similar to your router. Most router companies just use software licensed from another router company. So for example, Cisco is a perfect example of someone who makes router software and a bunch of people use it. There are Cisco routers in there and you'll be able to find basically your router information on the Cisco router system without it being your exact router company. Does that make sense? Basically watch the video and you'll learn all the terms you need to learn to be able to find it in your router. Speaking of terms though, I'm gonna give you some as I'm port forwarding. So first and foremost, from for me, it is in security. For you, it may be in advanced. It may be in advanced advanced. It may be in NAT gaming, NAT gaming. It may be in NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding. It may be in port forwarding slash port triggering. It may be in administration. It may be in system administration. It may be in system. It may be in apps and gaming. Again, for me, it is in security. Then it's in apps and gaming. What did I say? That's one place it could be. Then for me, it's in single port forwarding. For you, it might be port forwarding slash port triggering. It might just be called port forwarding. It might just be called forwarding, right? But when you find it, you'll know you found it because it'll have things like a port one or port two or external port and internal port or inside port and outside port. It'll also have a place for an IP address or it'll have a list of devices that are currently connected to your network. It'll have a protocol of some sort and you'll be able to give it some sort of a name. So if I go ahead and click add new single port forward here for our name or the ID, we're just going to name it Minecraft because this is just to know what this port forward is for. Now for anything mentioning port, if it says the word port, at all, right? If it says the word port at all, you're gonna put 25565 five, five in there. So that says the word port, external port, we're putting 25565. Five, five. Internal port, guess what? Says the word port, we're putting 25565 five, five in there. Now, for our protocol, that is going to be TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or both. If you don't have both, just do the port forward twice. One for TCP and then one for UDP, right? Like so. Now, once you've done that, and by the way, if you have both, just select both protocols. And then once you've done that, you have your device IP. Now you may also have a list of devices connected to your network. And if you do, go ahead and select your computer that you're starting the server on. If you don't, your device IP is your IPv4 address. See, there's many reasons. In many ways, you can use your IPv4 address. So in my case, it's 192.168.1.123. So let's go ahead and copy that over here, 1.1.123. And then we go ahead and click Save. Now we go ahead and click Apply and click OK. Our port forward is done. However, you may have an external IP or an outside IP. Now, if you have an internal IP, that is your IPv4 address that we just got. But if you have an external IP, that is going to be your public IP address. Luckily for all of us, we all need our public IP address because that is how your friends are going to join your Minecraft server. So you can go to the description down below and find whatsmyip.com. And there's a lot of black boxes on your screen. All you can see is the last three digits of my IP address, which is 176 here. Now. 
everything else is blacked out because again you don't want to give your ip address out publicly it's not something you want to do because people can ddos you they can take you offline they can find out where you live as you can see you can see all the information you can get over here on the right hand side your city your state your region your country your zip code your latitude longitude coordinates it's all able to be gotten from your ipv or your i public ip address and that's why it's very very important that you keep it private nevertheless i'm going to go ahead and copy my public ip address where you can only see the last three digits so you know i'm going to be using the same one in minecraft and then if you need Needed this for your port forward come over here and paste it in but now we can minimize our browser we want to go ahead and start up our minecraft server with the run.bat file there as you can see that is now starting on up and we're gonna go ahead and open up minecraft so we can join the server so boom open up minecraft here i'm gonna play 1.14 latest release as you can see release release 1.14.4 and click play minecraft is now opening right on up and our server is now starting right on up on the other side here i'm gonna move minecraft to where we can see it better as you can see right there now when everything is loaded on up here we'll be able to uh, join the server as soon as it started so let's go ahead and click on multiplayer and then we can click direct connect but wait what is that play.breakdowncraft.com the best minecraft server in the multiverse we have custom survival custom skyblock medieval survival is our player based survival server it is absolutely incredible and we absolutely love it but here we are on the multiplayer screen we can go ahead and direct connect to our public IP address. So if I go ahead and paste that in there, you can see the last three digits are 176, so it's the same one we used earlier, and then we can go ahead and click Join Server. It'll then connect us right on into our server, getting everything running, and as you can see, we are now connected on in down here, loading in terrain, and then we'll be online. Boom, here we are, we are on our server. Look at that, it's absolutely beautiful, actually. Reminds me of uh, 113, actually, with how beautiful this like these, these oceans are, the coral reef here. What seed is this? Everybody always wants to know the seed. So this is actually a perfect time for me to show you how to op yourself. So come over here to your server console, type OP and then your username. This is going to allow you to do things like slash key game mode creative and all that stuff, but also slash seed. And then there's the seed. You might have to zoom in to see it. It's also, uh, I can think I can run it over here as well. Yeah, there's the seed for you. And you'll be able to, uh, to get that. And if you want to spawn into this world, this actually looks like a really, really cool world. But nonetheless, if you have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. Now, if you do have any issues with getting your friends onto the server, let's say you can't join via your public IP address. If you can't, that's perfectly fine. Just go ahead and join using your local IPv4 address that we got earlier, right? So go ahead, join via that local IPv4 address, and then you'll be good. All you need is your friends to join off of the public IP. You can join off your local IP. Now, if your friends can't join off your local IP, then you need to make sure that there's a firewall not blocking it. For example, it could be Windows Defender is blocking the like the connection, or or it could be something completely different. For example, it could be a firewall on your router blocking the connection. Usually it's Windows Defender, but then after that, it could be your router's firewall blocking the port forward. But yeah, that's pretty much everything you need to know to get your server up and running on Spigot. Now, you probably want to add some plugins to this server, and if you do, well, I completely understand, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that in the next video, which you can check out your screen right now. Popped up as a little end card there. You can go and check out that video. It's also at the eye at the top of your screen, how to add plugins to your Spigot server in Minecraft 1.14.4. Thank you also so much for watching. If you enjoyed, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, come play with us on play.breakdowncraft.com, the best Minecraft server in the multiverse, and I am out. Peace.